Ball pythons are the best beginner snake. Great for advanced keepers, intermediates, and definitely great for beginners. I'm going to tell you all about why ball pythons might be the best snake that you can find in the pet trade. I'm Adam, this is Zapdos, you're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. more and more common that you see on Facebook groups or even YouTube that ball pythons aren't great beginner reptiles and I don't think that's true I think that because they are a little bit bigger and because they do require a little bit more humidity than previously thought and uh, more humidity than say a corn steak or something like that a lot of people will say that they're not great beginners but I disagree completely I think that they are great beginner reptiles because well, look at them. They're beautiful, right? And the idea behind getting your first reptile is that you want something that's fun to look at. Now, this is a banana morph. Uh, we don't know what else is in them. This is a rescue. But this is Zapdos. Uh, he's a banana ball python. It's a really interesting gene. Um, if you want to know more about bananas, that's something that you definitely want to research. It's pretty complicated in comparison to a lot of other ball pythons. But with Zapdos, is he's a fully grown male. This is how big a male is going to get. Maybe a little bit bigger than this. But he is about, I'd say, three and a half, maybe four feet. Females get up to six feet. And if you want to know all about ball pythons, check that video out right there. But this video is about why Zapdos and his kind are maybe the best beginner reptiles. And it's really simple. They're easy to keep. They're very easy to keep and they're impressive. They're fun to watch. Uh, there is a little bit of a challenge with them. But I think you're going to learn more by keeping a ball python than maybe any other pet reptile. For example, if you get a corn steak, it's going to be a lot smaller. It might be a little bit more squirmy, a lot faster. And as you can see, Zapdos, who doesn't really get held a lot, he doesn't get a lot of handling time because he was pretty easy out of the gate. And I've been uh, focusing a lot of my time on taming down other ball pythons. He's pretty good, right? And especially for a rescue. Ball pythons are a little bit impressive in size. And as you can see, he is pretty robust. You're not going to hurt this animal just by kind of sort of grabbing them a little bit too hard or whatever the case is. They're great for children for this reason in my opinion because they aren't fragile like say a corn snake or maybe even a hognose snake, right? They have a little bit more uh, stoutness to them and they, they, they're a little bit more hardy than other snakes. Something else that's really cool about them is that they can hold on to you and as you can see he's about to go around my neck which feels really weird but he's gonna be able to hold himself. He is a true constrictor so he constricts his meals, that's how he eats. But he's not so strong that he's going to harm you. Uh, maybe a very small child, but you'd never leave a small child alone with a ball python or any constrictor or any snake or any animal anyway, right? So with these guys, something that's really unique and something that I gripe on a lot is that they don't need UVB light. And that's why I don't suggest things like bearded dragons. Bearded dragons are great animals, but they need a UVB light. They need it super dry, drier than your house. And in my opinion, it's harder to dry something out than it is to make it more humid. And we're going to get to that because these guys do need a more humid environment that a lot of people can properly do without a ton of maintenance. Another big difference between a ball python and say a bearded dragon is that these guys don't need a basking spot. They do need a hot spot, but you don't need a full light, like a, a basking spot like you'd see like replicating the sun is basically what I'm trying to say. You can just use a heat mat or a heat pad or something like that and that works completely fine. Heat tape is another thing as well. So it's really easy to facilitate. You don't really need any light at all, where with a lot of animals you need a UVB light and you need a basking light. So it makes it a little bit easier to keep a snake like this. And they don't need a ton of space. I mean, they're not small animals like you can see. They do get a little bit bigger than this as females, but they're not big either. And what I mean by a small space is that you can get away with a four by two by one. So four feet long, two feet deep, and one foot high because they don't need a ton of room to go up, basically. They don't climb in trees, they're not or arboreal or semi-arboreal. They are truly a terrestrial snake, so you don't have to worry about giving them a ton of height. So you can give them a very small area, right? A PVC is perfect. And as you can see here, this is, in my opinion, the ideal size. Not just the minimum size, but ideal. So it doesn't take up a ton of room, and it's impressive enough that if you want it to be, it could be a focal piece of your room. Oh yeah, and before we continue with kind of the boring uh, technical aspects of it, they're super fun. This is hilarious to me that he's just like, I just saw him sneaking out of my armpit here. He was trying to get into my shirt. 
I think it's like the coolest thing. These guys are impressive enough and big enough that they're gonna impress your friends for sure. Uh, maybe scare your parents away, but we've got a video right here that can let you know how to convince your parents to get one of these if they're not so keen on getting a ball python. But something that people think is a big challenge is temperature and humidity. And I'm here to tell you, it's not. It's really simple, as long as you use the proper enclosure. So PVCs are my favorite because humidity is very easy to keep in a PVC because there's no screen top like you'd get with, say, a fish tank with a screen top, right? So if you use a PVC or a wood enclosure, or even if you use something that has a screen top, but you use tin foil or a damp towel or something on the top that's not going to dry it out, that is the easiest way to keep the humidity up. So in my opinion, it's pretty easy to keep the humidity. And as far as temperature goes, if you clicked on that link and watched the Ball Python Care Guide, you'll notice that although it is pretty warm, it's not crazy warm, and there's not a huge variant from hot side to cool side that I would recommend or basically anyone would recommend who knows anything about ball pythons. So it's pretty darn simple to take care of these guys with heat and humidity, which for reptiles is kind of a big talking point. Now let's move on to how easy these guys are aside from heat and humidity. Because the thing is, you gotta feed these guys and water these guys. We talked about the humidity, so have a big water bowl. It's gonna help the humidity anyway. They always need a source of water, but also the food. It's not like, say, a bearded dragon where you need to feed it salad every day or every third day, depending on who you talk to. It is something that you only have to feed them once a week or maybe even less, depending on the size that they get. Babies maybe a little bit more, but you're never gonna have to feed them every day. So feed them an appropriately sized rodent every week or every 10 days. Whatever it is that your size of reptile is, your size of ball python is gonna require, which you can learn more about right here, that's when you're gonna feed them. So that's pretty simple, easier than a dog, a cat, or a bird. And then with the pooping, well, that's only gonna be about once a week too. However many times you feed them, generally they poop out an entire meal in one go. So maybe twice, maybe two, but generally they're gonna poop out once a feed. And then sometimes it's even really easy because although it's easy just to scoop up the poop and pee, which comes out together as a urate. So no matter what you do, it's gonna be really easy to scoop out the poop. You literally wait for it to dry, like wait a couple hours and scoop it out with some sort of shovel or even something that you'd use for like cat litter. Um, but also sometimes they'll shed, which is happens depending on their age and size, uh, how frequently, and they'll just poop inside the shed and you just pull it out all in one piece. So that's kind of cool too. Much easier than a cat, which you have to scoop out every day. Ball pythons, once a week you gotta worry about the poop. And lastly, safe for kids and fun to handle and easy. As you can tell, I'm not really paying too much attention to this guy. He's wrapped around me. I've got him over here. And the only reason I'm holding on to him is so that he's in frame because he was trying to get behind me on my chair. I do keep an eye on his face because ball python bites don't feel good. They're not super common, but also, I mean, as you hold the snake, it's not something you want to jinx yourself with. But also, they're not crazy bad either. You might bleed a little bit, but you're not going to have to go to an emergency room, even if you're a kid. Of course, they're not venomous, obviously, they're constrictors. So for kids, these are great because they're impressive. The, the creature isn't gonna hurt them and they're not gonna hurt the creature, and I like that. And that's why I think they're better than corn snakes because with corn snakes, they're more fragile, they're more flighty, and in my opinion, they're more bitey as well. Most importantly, to end this off, knowledge and research. If you've watched this video and you think to yourself, I'm gonna get myself a ball python now, Good for you, but make sure you do your research, make sure you do everything that you need to do before you bring the ball python home, including setting up its enclosure. Watch the video that I put out uh, a few months ago that I pointed to at the beginning of the video, and other videos like it. Read care sheets, do your research, and make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before you bring Zapdos or one of his friends home to your house. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.